You ain't given to rum drinking, are you? Oh, no, sir. Nor quarrelsome. Like some I could name. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fictional Brits everyone thinks are real. Uh, is this a joke? This, this is, uh, is this a joke? Is this a joke? Just Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at fictional characters from the UK that some people genuinely think exist in real life. Let us know in those comments whether you've ever thought a fictional character was actually real. Don't be shy now. Number 10, Blackadder. The rain beats down so hard, it makes your head bleed. So, some sort of hat is probably in order. Yes, bafflingly, a survey reported in 2011 declared that 20% of those surveyed thought Blackadder was based on a real person. This is despite the fact that every series of Blackadder not only moves time period, but brings back most of its core characters and cast. So, not only would Blackadder have to be real, but so would everybody else, including Baldrick, horrifyingly. Baldrick, does it have to be this way? It's true that there are many real figures who appear in Blackadder, notably Elizabeth I and the Duke of Wellington, but Blackadder himself was fictional. However, Blackadder is a real name, and some real-life Blackadders have found themselves the subject of ridicule for their fictional counterparts. Now must be a breakdown of communication. Number 9, Robin Hood. Unlike other fictional figures, we can't blame anyone who thinks Robin Hood is real. That way. He's a genuine piece of Nottingham's history and culture, with the city boasting statues of him, not to mention that the famous Sherwood Forest is very much real. But there's simply no evidence that Robin Hood, who stole from the rich and corrupt sheriff to give to the poor, actually existed. There's not even consensus about who or what might have inspired the popular legend. He originates from medieval romantic tales, and we often see him going up against the widely maligned King John. You never know though, there's no evidence for his existence, but there's equally little against it. By God, we take it back. Number 8, Long John Silver. In fairness, the lives of real pirates are just as embellished as the life of this entirely fictional one. The only primary source for most notorious pirates comes from the anonymously written General History of Pirates, widely regarded to be more fiction than fact. Black doggy, I'll black dog him. Long John Silver, however, isn't amongst the ranks of Blackbeard and Black Bart. He was invented in the 1880s by Robert Louis Stevenson as the villain in Treasure Island, the widely popular children's pirate story and has featured in plenty of films and TV shows over the years. Though interestingly, Stevenson may have based Long John Silver on someone he actually knew, but that friend definitely wasn't a devil of the high seas. You ain't given to rum drinking, are you? Oh, no, sir. Nor quarrelsome. Like some I could name. Number seven, Miss Marple. <laughs> Miss Marple. Agatha Christie remains one of the most famous and prolific British writers in history, and her influence on the murder mystery genre can't be overstated. She's so influential, in fact, that some of her most famous characters are believed to be real by some. Chief among them is Miss Marple, the elderly amateur detective with a knack for solving the confounding crimes she happens to stumble across. But there's a kernel of truth in every story, and she may have been inspired by Christie's grandmother. Diesel engines that are now appearing all over our railways. Most unappealing. Similarly, there are people who believe Christie's other world-famous detective, Hercule Poirot, was a real person, though remember, he's Belgian. Number 6, Eleanor Rigby. Many songs by the Beatles take inspiration from real events. She's Leaving Home from Sgt. Pepper was based on a teenager called Melanie Coe, for instance. But this isn't the case for Eleanor Rigby. Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been. Eleanor Rigby wasn't even a real name the Fab Four saw somewhere and stole, though the name does appear on a real gravestone in Liverpool. Paul McCartney has said that he simply wanted to write a song about someone called Eleanor because he liked the name, and that Rigby was another name he liked. 
He said he'd never even seen the grave. McCartney has said, however, that the song was inspired by the general lonely people he encountered in Liverpool. I'd in the church and was buried along with her name. Nobody came. Number five, Dame Edna Everidge. It was a really <laughs> desperate turning on the TV and watching loose. <laughs> Perhaps one reason Dame Edna is so convincing as a character is simply that she's been around for such a long time. The man behind her, who's actually Australian incidentally, debuted her all the way back in the 1950s. This means you have multiple generations of Brits who have been raised with the figure of Dame Edna, always played by Barry Humphreys in British pop culture. So it's no surprise people think she's a real, eccentric woman who was made a dame by the Queen some points before they were born. She's been a fixture of the British comedy scene for an incredible 70 years. And you need a bit of bling round your neck, darling. Number 4. Spinal Tap Arguably the most famous rockumentary to ever exist, This Is Spinal Tap is so compellingly written and acted that it's easy to think they're a real band despite all the ridiculous things that happen to them. The spontaneous combustion of their drummer, for instance. Spinal Tap is based vaguely on self-important British metal bands of the 70s and 80s, but not a specific one. That's all right. I mean, if the singer's the victim, it's different. It's See, not he sexy. He did a twist on it. He, he did, did a twist, see? and it's yeah, turned it around. We thought but not only are Spinal Tap not real, they're also, shockingly, played by Americans. Perhaps more surprisingly, those comedians went on to have musical careers. It's a testament to how good their improv and accents were that they could pass themselves off as British poses. Is this a show? This, this is a show. Is this a show? Number three, the Lannisters and Starks. Gods have seen fit to make it so. Even though the books and TV show are full of hallmarks of the fantasy genre, dragons for instance, there are people out there who are convinced that Game of Thrones has a basis in fact. And throughout the lifespan of the show, many articles popped up trying to identify which genuine historical figures inspired George R. R. Martin. Or is it the other way around? It is true that it takes some extremely loose cues from the Wars of the Roses, in which Richard III of York was ousted by the Lancastrian Tudors, but there definitely weren't any dragons. Even Kit Harrington has said he's met people who think you need to know English history to enjoy the show. Don't think too much, Bran. Number two, Sherlock Holmes. So you're free this evening? Absolutely. Dinner? Wonderful. Undoubtedly, Sherlock Holmes is the most famous detective in the world and has been a feature of British pop culture since the 1890s. Sorry, Miss Marple. But though it's easy to view the fact that people think Holmes is real as a lament for the state of British education, plenty of people at the time thought he was real too. Discombobulate. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle received plenty of letters from people who believed in Holmes and wanted to hire him to solve a case of their own. This carried on for decades, even after Doyle's death. We wonder if Robert Downey Jr. or Benedict Cumberbatch get strange letters asking them if they can solve a murder or find their lost possessions. Consider it done, I'll stop him. Number one, King Arthur. Like Robin Hood, you may have heard that there's debates around whether or not King Arthur existed. However, most scholars agree that there's probably very little truth in the Arthurian legends. It's possible there may have been someone called Arthur or Arturus who fought against the Saxons over a thousand years ago, but King Arthur of Camelot is extremely far removed from this story by now. As well as that, many of the most famous Arthurian tales are actually French. Arthur himself is always King of the Britons, but the stories are part of France's long tradition of chivalric romances. Historians can't even agree on where Camelot itself is supposed to be. Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.